game started. The doodah man. Okay, let's see. E4. Um, how about an Alechen's defense here? Uh, okay, well, we'll transpose into a uh, Four Knights, I guess, or a Vienna game. Yeah, he's coming out with the bishop. The Vienna game, a lot of times the plan is to play um, f, f4 f here, so you avoid playing knight f3. So maybe f4 could be played right here. Or maybe he's just playing this like a, uh, a two knights defense, uh, a um, Italian game, except without knight f3. Yeah, he's just playing it like an Italian game. So I think... Um, Let's keep the bishop inside the pawn chain, and I um, don't have to worry about this pin causing any trouble now. And um, and I think I can get in d5, which is always good if you can get in d5. But if I play d5, he plays e5, I take the bishop, he takes the knight, I take back, that's okay. I play d5, and he takes, I take, uh, it's not defended, it's not, I can't play that. Okay, so I just have to go with d6 then. So it's probably been a successful opening for white, he got the open f file, he got his bishop to f4 in one move. Um, but I can try and stir things up a little bit here with this bishop e6 move. I want to play this before he gets knight to, uh, knight to g5. It's, uh, the timing here is important. And if he takes, then I have an open f-file too. I can castle and our, our ricks will oppose each other on the f-file and I should be okay. If he doesn't take, I can play knight, um, Maybe knight a5. Try and round up that bishop. Get the bishop here. Might leave my knight stranded out there, though. Knight a5, and he just takes the bishop anyway. And then I have to waste a move bringing it back. Maybe I should just castle. Ah, uh, oh, but this move. <clears throat> okay, so now knight a5 is a real contender. Let's go ahead and go for it. Yeah, there's no check. I was just wondering. Sometimes there's checks, but the queen is not coming out here. He can, of course, take my bishop. He can check with uh, his bishop. That check is there, but I can block with the pawn. I think that is okay for me. Uh, I was sort of expecting him just to take take the uh, the bishop on e2. He could also take the knight, I mean, on e7. He could also take the knight on f6. He could drop the bishop back to b3. A lot of, lot of possibilities here. But, uh, well, the idea, if he just drops the bishop back, I take the bishop, he takes back, and then I take the knight, he takes, and I win a pawn. So I guess that's not so great. So probably he should move his knight. Knight takes f6 or knight takes e7. Hmm, he could try knight to g5. That's an interesting try. Knight g5, hitting this bishop. I take his bishop. He could take back with a pawn, or he could take my bishop. I take back. Check. Just to move the knight. Okay, so he goes for that. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense to me. It comes with a tempo, since it's a check. And, uh, yeah, so now we're in this position where my knight has to find a way back, back into the game, but it's got a good square on c6 waiting for it. Okay, so he's uh, preparing to bring the queen out to harass my knight, I suppose. Let's go ahead and castle immediately. Oh, you know, that was more likely to be uh, about defending the b2 pawn. He wasn't really thinking about that check, because I had knight c6 anyway blocking the check. So probably played c3 to block uh, my bishop from taking on d2. So this is okay. Let's see. He's left a loose bishop here. 
So if I play bishop takes c3, what does he play? Maybe he plays bishop takes uh, d6. Bishop takes c3, bishop takes d6, hitting my rook. So I can't just take another pawn. Or can I? He takes my rook, I take his rook. He retreats his bishop, I retreat my bishop. Or I take a pawn, he takes a pawn, I take another pawn, he takes another pawn. I take back, and then he has to move. And, and then he's my queen's. Yeah, I think I think this wins a pawn. <laughs> I don't know if I explained that very well, but uh, in that line where we keep taking pawns, I ended up with a piece up because on this this square, my uh, bishop is not under attack. Oh, you know what? Mm, oh no, no, that's not a problem. <laughs> For a second, I was hallucinating. He had knight takes d6. Yeah, so he takes there, hits my rook, but I take here, hitting his rook. Maybe he has some queen move here. So bishop takes pawn, queen takes bishop. Bishop takes rook, bishop takes rook. If he brings his queen out attacking my knight, I'll take his... Um, I will take his um, bishop then. So this is uh, a piece up for me, isn't it? He gets a free tempo with his knight, and my knight is out of play. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, but I did win a pawn. And say knight to um, e knight knight d4 hitting the my pawn or knight knight g5 hitting my pawn. I have queen to um, queen somewhere to defend the pawn. Probably here. This also defends g7 as well as uh, e6 and hits the knight. My knight's still out of play. This pawn is loose, so the queen had a move to attack the knight in the pawn like here. <coughs> okay, let's bring the knight back with the tempo on the queen. Ah, but then I'll take this pawn. Uh, I don't want to lose that pawn, but, uh, well, that's a problem. So that he did find a double attack. Ah, <clears throat> let's see. No, it goes with check. I was going to say I could take his knight because his knight is hanging if he takes the pawn, but he takes the pawn with check. If I defend here, he takes my knight. Okay, well, it looks like he got his pawn back. It's uh, yeah, sometimes the case. You can win a pawn, but it leaves your pieces in a bad spot, and your opponent can you know, use that. Check. And uh, this forces an exchange, so this is not at all great for me. In fact, he's hitting the uh, c-pawn kind of annoyingly. And, uh, well, I have the outside pawns and he's got the center pawns we'll see we will see which are more important let's see I want to move my knight away so I can move my c pawn forward He could play d5. That's probably a good move here. Yeah. And now I need to uh, find a way to blockade that. <clears throat> I don't want to play uh, c6 there because he would push on with uh, d6, which would be very, very dangerous. I don't have rook to um, d8 to block that pawn from coming forward. So it's trouble. Ah, you know what I could try? I could try rook e8. And he takes my pawn, I take his pawn. Let's give this a shot. 
and if he um, doesn't do anything then I have the idea of c6 anyway trying to undermine his knight okay let's see so if I play c6 he doesn't have to take it he can just leave things there bring his king one step closer I play c6 and he pushes the pawn forward and I take the knight and he pushes it forward again I can get behind it and I can stop it in time so I think c6 is okay and it saves me the trouble of having to defend it all the time so I guess he's just going to kind of sit on this position doesn't want to push that pawn forward so he'll just wait for me to take he needs to find some other move like bringing the king up king to uh, e3 maybe that would set him up for some kind of nasty pin king to f3 walks under the fork knight knight h4 forks the king and the rook pawn moves possible and and then i'm just going to take here that gives him a passed pawn and uh and i can create a passed pawn on the outside but i have to make sure that his passed pawn <laughs> doesn't doesn't win it's it's tricky white might be better here that uh it's such an advanced pawn it's very dangerous and passed pawns of course in the end game are always a big threat Well, he's thinking about this position. I guess it's tricky. Let's see. He takes, I take, he takes. He could get two pawns that way, but I still get my rook behind it. And he can't bring his rook over to defend. I could start pushing the other pawn forward. I think I have time to stop everything. Hmm. Down to a minute 47. wonder if he's still connected let's let's see if I'm connected actually yeah I'm connected hmm I don't know minute 30 what else could he do yeah I mean I don't see anything besides um, moving the king forward or moving the pawns forward maybe there's some clever rook maneuver bringing the rook yeah the rook doesn't have anywhere great to go So king e3 or, or one of those pawns. I wonder if he got um, pulled away from the game. Sometimes it happens, you know, you have to go answer the doorbell or something. Ah, he moved. Ah, he found a square to move the knight to that protects his pawn. Okay, well my idea here is to take. If he takes my pawn on b7 I will take again so he will take back this way and I'll kick his knight I guess he's considering whether to take with the rook or the king it takes with the I mean rook or the pawn um, let's kick that knight I don't want to lose that pawn and where's the knight going back to where it came from yeah it's a complicated end game so uh, you know I can understand why he would take time with it but uh, well really you can't take that much time <laughs> you have to uh, you have to find some moves here okay just goes back there so my idea was to um, lift my rook up like this. My knight is still guarding f8. And put my rook in front of the pawn. That's what I'm trying to get to. 
And once I've got some kind of stable... White forfeits Okay, yeah, time. he just lost on time. Yeah, and once I get some kind of stable position here, I was going to try and push these funds forward. Well, maybe we can check out that uh, in the game in the postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.